Hello everyone, and welcome to the North Georgia GMRS Information and Instructional Video Segment. I am Atlanta 750 WRMR 367, and my name is Jeff. Today I will show you how to be sure that the transmitter you are about to purchase, or maybe even the one you are about to use, is both FCC compliant and within the rules of the North Georgia GMRS MOU. This is the same MOU that we all agreed to follow by signing up for our memberships. The North Georgia GMRS MOU states that only Part 90 and Part 95 certified radios may be used on our network. The MOU can be found on the website at nggmrs.org. This video is not intended to dive into the rules with the why we must use these radios, but strictly the how we go about to making sure that the transmitters are within the rules. Chat Radio was nice enough to lend us some radios for a few videos in our segments. Please help support those who support us. So let's dig in. Here we have two brand new Anytone radios. The one on the right in the gray box is a handheld. The one on the left is a mobile in the brown box. You will see on the sticker on the outside of both of the boxes we have FCC ID numbers on each. I have opened the boxes to verify that the data plates on the radio are indeed matching the stickers on the boxes. So now that we have this information, what do we do with it? How do we use it? So if we go to our computer and open up our favorite search engine, and simply search for FCC Equipment Authorization Search, you will come up with most browsers an FCC OET Authorization Search as your first hit. So if we click on that link, it'll bring us to this landing page. For the purposes of this video, we're only going to use these first two boxes. The grantee code is typically the manufacturer of the radio, and is either the first three or the first five characters of the FCC ID number. The product code is typically the model number of the radio from that manufacturer, hence why we have two boxes. Anytone makes lots of radios, but in this case we're just going to focus on these two. The D878, which is the handheld, and the D578, which is the mobile version. So, for let's start with the handheld. So, the first three digits of the FCC ID number are T, 4, K. And then the product code is going to be D, 8, 7, 8, U, V, I, I, because that's Roman numerals. So, if we hit enter, our search is going to re respond back with a whole bunch of lines of data. Now the first and most important part is make sure that in these lines of data the FCC ID number matches the one that we are actually searching for. The next most important part is to make sure that the frequency range that we're going to be operating in, which in this case for GMRS is 462 and 467 megahertz, and that's the line we're looking for. So our FCC ID number here matches and here's the frequency range that we're going to be within for GMRS. So if we shift over to the left here and click on this little check mark, we're going to display the grant for that radio within that frequency range. So now here you're going to find the grant from the laboratory, which is a third party laboratory that does this testing for the different manufacturers and for the FCC. So if we look down to here, here towards the bottom for what the grant actually is, our GMRS frequencies are 462 and 467. You'll notice here different power levels, output, frequency tolerance, and emission designators. For the purposes of this video, we are concerned with a Part 90 compliance and a 462 and 467 frequency range. So here we see that this Anytone handheld is Part 90 certified to be used in GMRS frequencies. So in this case, if you were at a ham fest or at a 
your local radio store, hopefully it's chat radio, and you ran this FCC ID number, that radio is safe to purchase. Go ahead, purchase it, program it, and enjoy it on the GMRS side of the FCC bands because that is a compliant radio. So let's go back here to our search and we're going to perform our search again. So now you'll see the form has reset. And I'm going to switch over here to a multi view. And the brown box is our mobile. So again, for the grantee code, we're going to enter T4K. And then we're going to enter D578UV because the pro model is a UV. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, some instructional video this is, he botched the numbers up and didn't even come up with good search results. Well, that was intentional. For the purpose of instructional videos, it is very important that when you do your FCC ID number, you type it in ex exactly as you see it on the package. So if we go and type this in again, T4K, but this time we put the hyphen in for D578UV and then hit enter. We display all these results. So again, like I mentioned with the HT, we have to make sure the FCC ID number matches the radio that we're actually looking at. You'll notice in this case we have a D578UV, a UV3, and a UV2. For the mobile that we have here in front of us, it's just simply a UV. So that would be this bottom one here with the frequency range that applies to GMRS of 406 to 480. So let's go ahead and display that grant. You'll notice for this radio, we have two different certifications for this radio. We have a part 22, which really doesn't concern us for GMRS, but it is part 90 compliant for GMRS frequencies. Again, with the output power, frequency tolerance, and emission designators that the laboratory had when it did its testing. So now you'll say, well, Jeff, there's, there's a bunch of other 578s, and some of those I was at the store, and they got all kinds of cool things. One of them's a tri-band. One of them receives on the airband so I can listen to uh, airplane traffic. You know, for the extra few dollars, I think I'd like to have all those extra bells and whistles. Well, let's dig into that a little bit. A D578 Plus is how they're typically marketed, but the actual callout is a D578 UV3. So for a D578 UV3, for the frequency range we're going to be using in GMRS, it's going to be this fourth one down. So if we follow that over and click on the grant, well, uh-oh, this one's not Part 90 certified. You'll notice that it's only certified in Part 15. Well, if you go looking around your house and pause this video, you'll find that your refrigerator, your HVAC unit in your house, and many other electronic devices are Part 15 compliant. Well, what does Part 15 compliant mean? Part 15 compliant means that it is just not going to cause harmful interference with other devices or other radio frequency bands. So being that this radio with the air band and the tri-band received for amateur frequencies, while it may sound appealing, is not going to be good or within the regulations for GMRS or the North Georgia GMRS network. So that is probably one you want to put back on the shelf and go back to the pro model that we know for certain is compliant with part 90, which would be the bottom one, just the plain old UV. So I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope it will help you in your purchases and maybe radios that you already have or radios that you were given and make sure that you're dealing with a compliant radio. Thanks again to Chat Radio for allowing us to use these radios for the purposes of the video. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are North Georgia GMRS. This is Atlanta 750 WRMR 
367. My name is Jeff, and I hope to hear you on the air real soon. Thank you.